again from the initial email. It looks as though it's coming through. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, Troy, sir. Punanda. Uh, welcome to our um, Harvest Sunday. Deep Seal Kunhayev. Um, we're very pleased to have our visiting minister, uh, Reverend Paul Anance, who will be preaching for us today, and, and she's a candidate to be uh, 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 our new minister. Um, and we're going to start, and also we have our new music director is, will be playing for us. Uh, his name is Jack Cohen, and we're going to start with the Prelude in C Minor by Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi. If you can cue that. Guthrie? Yes. Cynthia, can you lead us in the call to worship? Yes. Aralwa dia doli sam now de index dai e index sai. The call to worship, Psalm 90, 
verses 12 to 17. A heart of wisdom. Kyle Kalon Doith. A Kalon Lon. Deshi disk in Igavre Vindidiai in Ikail Kalon Doith. Dachwell or Gloith and Bahid. Trigar ha or the Waision. Dikonani and a bore of Gariad. In Igail Garbal Lady, a Tawen High and Horta the Eye. Ruin ill a win in Geneever. A divia a caplin nicely. Geneever of Lenadoid, a caquel som de grid. But the de white redoid and amlogi poison, Athanogonian teeth plant. But the chicared a rargloid, I do our nom. Cluida wife, I do ilo ini. Cluida wife, I do ilo. And now for our first hymn, um, Chloe Wilson will be singing Vel Vel Aruif Naur Atati, uh, accompanied by Jack Cohen on the organ. <laughs> Uh, we're not here in Gu uh, Guthrie. Um. I had myself muted. I'm sorry. Give me one second. And Reverend Paul, would you please lead us in the pastoral prayer? Certainly. Let us pray. 
God of grace and God of mercy, each of us comes to you today holding in our hearts sometimes heaviness and sometimes celebration and usually both. We pray especially for those who have had a difficult week, whether it be family matters or work or health issues or concerns for community or city or nation or world, whether it be anxiety or anger, fear or grief, we ask that you would bring comfort we ask that you would help us celebrate with one another in those areas that are uplifting to us. The events that have happened, the people who have come into our lives who make our lives richer and more joyful. We ask especially prayers for Shruti and her ordination exam in two weeks. We ask that you would give her wisdom and clarity and the ability to express for those who would examine her, her understanding of your calling for her, her vocation. We ask Lord that you would move in the city to negotiate, to help us negotiate health and safety we ask that you would move in this nation, that you would help people care about one another and take care of one another. We ask that you would help the leaders that we choose to treat each person with dignity. And we ask Lord, that you would move in this world, that you would join nations together so that we can find ways to navigate and to come through pandemics and political unrest and climate disorder. We ask that you would cause us to care about and care for your creation in all of its manifestations. And we ask all of this, Lord, in your son's name. And we say together, the prayer that he taught us. In tad, er hun wit an a nevoith, sang tethier de enu, delid de deir nas, guneler de awalis, megis an a nev felli ara thear hevit. Dara ini hethu, ein bara benathiol. A mada ini, ein deledion, fell a madeu ninae in deledwir. Ak nak arwaini i brovedigeth. Ether quared ni ragdrug. Canis etho ti, you a deir nas, ar gachli, ar gogoniant, an ois ois ois. Amen. And now um, our second hymn, Ovo Yezi Bendigadig.
Shruti, would you now kindly read the scripture? Yes. A reading from Hebrews, the fourth chapter. My negus do unview ak unkaflauni conflauni beth mine age weight. Mine vui miniog nar in clethif ak untridion duven on maim. Iwahanir enaid ar asprid a kamalai ar mer. Mine barni beth din mean a vethul ak an e furiadi. Doistim bid druir greadigaith, gafan an gashi, kithio, othi urthu. My ain gweld popeth an glir, a demar du dinni i gid, an a table itho. Feli ga deuch i ni, dal ein gafail, an beth din ni credi. My gunon ni arco feriad guich. Yesi. Mabdu, seeth wedi mindi meun, at du ir nefoith. Ak my archo feriad sin deash an yaun, morwan adin ni. My wedi kail e demtio in inyon, an inyon er in bath ani, on he bechi o gubel. Fashi gadeuch ini. Glossio at orseth du an haderis. My du mor hail, bees an trigarhai urthon ni ach an roy popet seeth e angen ini. Pan my angen help arnon ni. And now, um, Reverend Paul Anantz, um, our guest minister today, uh, with her sermon Receiving Mercy and Finding Grace. Thank you, Don. Um, I love language. I teach English and I love language. Imagery, metaphor, wordplay, puns, accents. I'm loving today. Accents, synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, even if they are called homophones these days. And the lectionary passages for today exhibit a vivid richness of language. Hebrews 4 reminds us that the word of God is living and active and is most perfectly manifest in Jesus, who empathizes with our weaknesses, allowing us to approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace and to help in time of need. Psalm 90 is a prayer in response to the crisis of exile, the, the exile that the Israelites experienced wandering around the desert. It is a prayer that beseeches God to make manifest God's work while in turn prospering the work of our hands. Psalm 90 is also wisdom literature. It's about the brevity and fragility of human life. A uh, memento mori, a reminder of how short life can be. The psalmist was writing on behalf of people who knew the despair and uncertainty of exile. I think for most of us, the last 18 months have felt like exile. While we've each had our own personal experience of the pandemic, we've shared the experience of being cut off, isolated exiled, exiled from our loved ones, exiled from our jobs, exiled without even leaving our homes, exiled from our lives. With the psalmist, we ask, how long? We pray, make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. The whole world has been afflicted by COVID death rates, the ensuing economic chaos that that has created and climate related natural disasters. And as far as evil is concerned, that is also pandemic. What down home in North Carolina, we would call pure meanness is paramount everywhere. 
all over the world, the country, throughout this city, people are hurting one another, denying each other's humanity, denying each other's divinity. And why? The color of our skin, the beliefs we hold, the way we vote, the people we love, the way we worship, whether or not we are female or male or non-binary. In 1974, James Taylor wrote a song, Let It All Fall Down, which speaks to this specifically. Well, it ain't nobody's fault but our own. Still, at least we might could have the good sense to know when we've been wrong. And it's already taken too long. In 1974, this song came out. And here we still are. Jan Richardson wrote a poem, Table Blessing, for World Communion, part of which reads, we are bloodied with our wars, we are wearied with our wounds. We carry our dead within us, and we reckon with their ghosts. We hold the seeds of healing. We dream of a new creation. We know the things that make for peace, and we struggle to give them wings. And so we pray with the psalmist, let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. We need to see God's work manifest. We need to be reminded of the beauty and preciousness of God's creation. We need to celebrate being created in God's image and adopted into God's family. We need to honor the connection we share with each and every one of God's children in all of our various hues and presentations. We need to be reminded of the power of God's grace and mercy and love. And what is our response to the manifestation of God's work? Hope. Hope which calls Probably, us to why, engage. I can't get into Zoom, but you can hear her sermon. Hope which calls us to engage and invest in work ourselves. Once again, praying with the psalmist, let the favor of our of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. Work that we do corporately, to promote justice and celebrate that every person is created in God's image. Work that we do individually. Every smile, friendly note, encouraging word, compassionate action, every gift, every talent shared, every prayer spoken or thought or sighed. These are seeds that we plant, tend, pray for. On this Harvest Sunday, we acknowledge seeds that were planted before we were born, and we pray for the seeds that we are planting that mightn't bear fruit until long after we're gone. It takes hope to plant a seed. It also takes work work to till and tend and protect and support and harvest. When we plant seeds of hope, justice, mercy, grace, compassion, and love, we participate in the living and active word of God. It isn't always or even often an easy task to plant seeds of hope. Sometimes it's overwhelmingly daunting. Given the past 18 months, all the loss, all the sadness, despair, death, exhaustion, all the waiting, hope has been hard. At times we may feel we can't go on, we can't do any more, 
We are too frustrated, too sad, too angry, too weak. The Hebrews passage tells us that Jesus is our high priest who is able to empathize with our weaknesses. The Greek sometimes gets translated sympathize, but it really is much closer to being affected with the same feelings of another because you have shared the same experiences. This is emphasized in the rest of the verse that Jesus is in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. We don't need to castigate ourselves when we fall short of our hopes and expectations. We don't need to browbeat ourselves when we run out of ideas or out of steam or out of time. We don't need to be filled with self-condemnation when we make mistakes. Jesus understands our weaknesses. Jesus knows our sorrow. Jesus experiences with us our horror and afflictions, which leads us to this most exquisite bit of gospel. Hebrews reads, let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Some of my favorite linguistic moments come into play in this verse. Thrones are considered seats of power, seats of authority. Think Game of Thrones. Yet we are told, let us therefore approach the throne of grace. Mere people enter throne rooms in all manner of obsequious submissiveness. Yet we are told, let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness. From the Greek parousia, which literally means all speaking. So it means with the confidence to speak up. You can approach the throne of grace and ask for what you need. We approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of to help in, to help in time of need. What's the difference you might ask between mercy and grace? Good question. The Greek word Elias gets translated mercy, pity, compassion. Karen is translated grace or kindness. A wonderful definition of grace comes from a rather surprising, at least to me, source. Swiss Calvinist theologian Karl Barth said, laughter is the closest thing to the grace of God. I've always thought of grace as what I pray for to get me through the daily difficulties and mercy as what I cry for when I am in despair or crisis. <laughs> I've been praying for both of those for a long time now. Perhaps in terms of Psalm 90, let your work be manifest is a cry for mercy and prosper the work of our hands is a prayer for grace. It doesn't matter though, the semantics of these near synonyms. The good news is that we get them both. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may, we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, because I'm an English teacher and my seminary Greek is rusty, I wanted to know if the sentence means so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need, or so that we may receive mercy and find grace for us to help 
in time of need. It turns out that the Greek doesn't actually specify. It's probably the first to help us in time of need. But since it's ambiguous, it might just be both. The help we receive in times of need enables us to help in times of need. Before we finish up, I have one more playful bit of language to point out. The 12th verse of Psalm 90 reads, so teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. The psalmist implores God to make us aware that life is short, to teach us to count every day, and by implication, to make every day count, so that we may gain a wise heart. Really? A wise heart? The heart is not the body part we usually associate with wisdom. In fact, it is often juxtaposed with what is considered wise, logical, rational. The heart is for passion, love, hopeless underdogs. Think of every romantic comedy or love song ever written. But the psalmist prays for a wise heart. What would that look like? Wisdom combined with love and compassion. Why it just might look like mercy and grace to help in time of need. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Paula. Um, just a few announcements. Um, our next service on November the 14th will be uh, Deep Seal Covad, um, Remembrance Sunday, Sunday. And then in December, we have our Advent and Christmas uh, service. Um, Iltid Barrett, who's been a very lively part of the Welsh community in New York, has uh, an art exhibit opening on, on the 14th at the West Beth Garrett Lurie. It's running from the 14th of October to the 13th of November. Um, there's the monthly meetup at the Liberty on the 20th, Wednesday, the 20th of October at six o'clock onwards. And the virtual Welsh language chat will be on the 26th of October, 23rd of November, the 14th of December. And then finally, um, Wales will be playing um, New Zealand, and you can you can catch that at the Liberty on 30 October, Saturday from noon till 2 p.m. And if you would like to donate to the congregation, um, you can do that at the website. There's a, a red button on the front on our front page, and you can donate there. Uh, and now we go to our final hymn. Kumar Yezi Vil Rudoyev. If you can cue that, Guffrey, please. That would be great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, apologies, everybody. <laughs> I missed out the doxology. Um, is it too late to do that, Shruti? We can do it. Why not? That'd be great. Lovely. Thank you. Pron voliant ho trigolion bi. Clear ne volient ho e varga. Utadem avaras brid blan. Amen. And Paul, if you could lead us in the blessing. Um... Uh, first, I want to say, and um, Don taught me this, uh, Dilk, <laughs> thank you for having me here. Um, I am from North Carolina, and uh, this is, tomorrow is Indigenous Peoples Day, and in North Carolina, there is a large uh, Cherokee community. Um, obviously not as large as it would have been if they had been left in peace. But I close us today with a Cherokee prayer blessing. May the warm winds of heaven blow softly upon your house. May the great spirit bless all who enter there. May your moccasins make happy tracks in many snows and may the rainbow always touch your shoulder. Amen. Finally, our postlude, um, Jack Kern will be playing um, Epilogue pour Solo Pedal by Jean Langlais.
Thank you, everybody. Um, we were going to try something out, and you don't have to um, participate if you don't want to, but we were going to break people into two breakout rooms, which you thought it might be easier for people to chat um, that way, since we have 15 people. So, Guthrie, um, can you talk us through that? Yeah, of course. So this is my first time creating and, and uh, making some breakout rooms. So I'm going to create two breakout rooms right now. And you guys can choose to join whichever breakout room you would like, I believe. I'm going to create them right now. And they are all open, I believe. Does everybody, it, there should be an option to join the breakout rooms down at the bottom of the, the Zoom window itself. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It's a little four square and it should say breakout rooms underneath it. I'll, I'll try first. I'll, I'll, I'll try to put myself in breakout one. There we go. I have a few people in one room. Yeah. I know. It's, it's a good day. 